Okay, today's lesson is 5.5 multiple angle and product to sum identities. We are only going to, or I'm only going to cover the first objective, which is the multiple angle identities. We're going to talk about double angle and half angles. We're not even going to do power reducing ones. But before I get into actually giving you the identities, I want to let you understand where they come from. So just real quick for one of them. Um, if you think of sine of two theta, okay, well, two theta is equal to theta plus theta. And that means that the sine of two theta is going to equal to the sine of theta plus theta. Then if I apply my sine sum identity, okay, then that means it's the sine of the first angle, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Well, those are exactly the same thing. So when you simplify it, you end up with two of them. So that is our sine double angle formula. If you do a similar thing to the cosine, you're going to get cosine squared minus sine squared. Now, why are there three of them? Because if I take this identity and I apply the Pythagorean identity to it, which was, um, you know, cosine squared, or let's go with sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. So if you plug that in there and simplify it, then you get this. If you plug, if you take the cosine squared and you plug in one minus sine squared, you can see that you're going to have one minus two sine squared. So those are variations. I will talk to you when I uh, do a problem to help you understand which one you want to use when. It does not matter, but some of them make your um, solving easier. And then the last one, tangent of two thetas means I'm going to have two tangent thetas on top and then one minus tangent squared theta on the bottom. Again, you do not have to memorize them. But if you're familiar with them, it will make it easier for you and you'll have more success while you're using them. So what kind of problems do you have to be able to do? So this first one, if the cosine of theta is equal to three fifths on the interval of zero to pi over two, find the sine of two theta, cosine of two theta, and the tangent of two theta. Okay. Now I'm going to do this similar to what I did in the previous problems. And that was, I had four steps. And the first step was, finding two angles on the unit circle. We don't, this, that, that doesn't apply on this one, but the second step is always going to be me applying the formula and I'll, that will be written in green. And then the next step is evaluating. So we're going to evaluate the tangent and the sine and the cosine, and then we're going to simplify. Again, they'll be color coded. So as we go through this, the first one that I have to do is the sine of two theta. So the sine of two theta, if I apply the formula or identity, that is two sine theta, cosine theta. And then my next step is I'm going to evaluate that. And evaluate means I'm putting the parentheses and I got to go figure out what is the sine of theta and what is the cosine of theta. Well, I don't know what theta is, but if they've told me one trig function, then I can find the other ones. So this is when you can do your x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But since I know I'm on the interval of 0 to 2 pi, then I know I'm in the first quadrant and I know everything's going to be positive, then sometimes it's easier just to do your triangle. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you use your Pythagorean theorem, you will figure out that the last side is 4. So that means cosine is what they gave me. If I come over here and to plug into my step with the parentheses, um, the sine of theta, according to my picture, is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's four-fifths, and my cosine is what they gave me, and that's three-fifths, and then you just simplify it, so we have 24 over 25, okay? Cosine of two theta, so to do this problem, so here's an example of it. I have three different options up here to use, okay? If they give me the cosine, then I'm going to use the one that only has cosine in it because then I don't have to do the extra step. And granted, we already did the extra step, but if you made any mistake here, you're going to make the same mistake on this problem. So if I just use this formula, then I have a less room for mistakes. So I'm going to use 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And the next step is to evaluate in parentheses. My cosine was given to me, and that is 3 fifths. And when you simplify that, with your handy dandy calculator, you get negative seven over 25. Okay, the last one here is tangent of two theta. And the tangent of two theta, y'all, 
Um, there are two ways. You've got the formula right here that you can use up here if you want to, but then I'd actually have to go calculate the tangent of theta. If I know the sine and the cosine, that to me is going to be an easier method. So I'm just going to say that the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of 2 theta over the cosine of 2 theta. The angle doesn't change. Um, and the reason for doing that is I have the two numbers here and it's going to be easier calculations. So different kinds, the beauty of math, y'all, you can do it more than one way and get the right answer. So the sine of 2 theta is my, well, if I could plug them in, sine of 2 theta is 24 over 25, cosine is negative 7 over 25, keep change flip, and you have an answer of negative 24 over 7. Okay, now we got to talk about solving an equation using a double angle identity. Okay, so what's important now and what you have to remember when you solve equations is that when you look at this first one, 2a, cosine of 2 alpha equals negative sine squared of alpha. Okay, the thing that you got to look at first that you should is that these two angles are not the same. So your trig function, when you're solving these equations, you have to have all the same angles. They can all be two thetas. They can all be thetas, or at least in this case, alphas. So I'm going to make a substitution. And in this case, with my cosine of 2 alpha, because this is in sine, I'm going to pick the equation, the identity that has only the sine in it. So the one that is cosine 2 alpha is going to be 1 minus sine squared of alpha, and that's equal to negative sine squared of alpha. I'm going to collect my sine squareds on the same side. So that's going to give me 1 equal to, because I'm going to add 2 to both sides, 2 sine squared theta. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I do, i got to remember my plus or minus. So um, <laughs> sine of alpha equals plus or minus 1. And that is at the top and the bottom of your circle. So alpha is equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. All right, on this next one, all right, again, tangent of 2 beta equals 2 tangent beta. So when I do this, again, I have to look at these angles, and I notice that they're not the same. So I have to make some type of substitution. I cannot continue solving. So I'm going to go use my tangent double angle identity, and that says 2 tangent beta over 1 minus tangent squared beta equal to the other side, which was 2 tangent beta. Now, if I put that over 1, y'all, okay, you can cross multiply, and that would be fine. But if you notice that the numerator here is exactly the same as the numerator there, then that means the denominators have to be equal. So that's kind of an easier way of doing this one. So that means 1 tangent squared beta is equal to 1. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides because I need to isolate that trig function. So negative tangent squared beta is equal to 0 divide by the negative 1, so that means tangent squared beta equals 0, and you take the square root of both sides, square root of 0 is 0, so where is the tangent 0? So you're looking on your unit circle, and the tangent is 0, y'all, because it's sine over cosine whenever the sine is 0, and that is equal to 0 and pi, and that's what we have. Okay. Now, the last set of identities that we have are half angle identities, okay, and they're kind of the yuckiest looking. The hardest thing for people to um, understand or remember is this plus or minus, and I'm going to help you with that. But notice here with the tangent, again, you have three different formulas, okay? Um, if you're just straight up evaluating or more times than not, this is going to be the easiest one to use because you, when you simplify it, that's the easiest one. If you come up with a radical or a fraction down here, it's much easier to simplify if you just have one term in the denominator versus more than one term. So if I can, I'm going to use that one. All right, so let's go find the exact value of each expression. So the first one says the sine of 75. So now um, let me tell you something else too. On this problem, y'all, um, it's 75 degrees. And if it's 75 degrees, if you can use a sum or difference identity, it's going to be easier. Okay, I'm trying to show you how to use the half angles. And I will tell you most oftentimes using the half angle means that I would be saying, oh, what's the sign of it? I'm going to pick a number that might not um, 
satisfy this, so I'm not going to worry about it, but 67.5. So when you see a fraction like that, 67.5, then you're going to go, that's a half angle. I need to use a half angle identity. But we're happen to, I'm using a simpler one today. So the sine of 75, but when you notice that, then to use the half angle, take that angle and multiply it by 2. And when you do, you're going to get something on your unit circle, or else they're not going to have you do it. Okay, so that means that the sine of 75 degrees is the same as the sine of what over 2? 150 over 2. Okay, so, oops. All right, so there's my sine formula. And so when I plug in my sine formula, y'all, uh, I'll come back here. Um, I have plus or minus 1 minus the cosine. And this is where people, oh, I don't know why that went away. There you go. Um, it's 1 minus the cosine of something over 2. This is not going to be 75. This is going to be your 150 because this whole thing equals 75. So the theta from my formula up here, if you think about it, 150 over 2, that means that's going to be the 150. So that's going to be plus or minus um, the cosine of 150 over 2. Now, how do you know if it's positive or negative? I never understood this in high school, so hopefully I'll make it easier for you. So 75, the original angle that you're looking for of 75 degrees is in the first quadrant. And if it's in the first quadrant, then everything is going to be positive. So that's why I know this one's going to be positive. So when I go and plug in, and I'm going to evaluate now, so I have the formula. that I mean, excuse me, I have the original problem. Pick my numbers. I applied the formula. Now I'm going to go evaluate. And the cosine of 150 is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now, the easiest thing, you cannot leave a fraction underneath a radical. So you have to rationalize that denominator. And you can write square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Or I find it a little bit easier if you just extend this and say multiply it by 2 over 2. It's the same thing because I'm underneath the radical. So now... When I simplify this on the bottom, I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which means on the bottom I'm going to have just 2. Go away. Just 2 on the bottom. Okay? And on the top, 2 times 1 is 1. And then I have two negatives. That gives me a plus. And then I have a square root of 3. So it's the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 2. One of the things about this, shell, this is the exact value. So you can leave a radical under a radical. That happens a lot in these kind of problems. And I will tell you that sometimes there can even be more than one way of writing this. So um, depending on the angles you choose. Um, all right, so let's go do this one. And then we have one other problem to solve and then we'll be done. So the tangent of 7 pi over 12, again, it says they're telling me to do it with a half angle. But if you ever see anything with a 0.5, then know that you're going to take that angle and you're going to multiply it by 2. And 7 pi over 12 times 2 is 7 pi over 6. That is on our unit circle. So I have the tangent of what goes up here is that new angle of 7 pi over 6 because 7 pi over 6 divided by 2 is 7 pi over 12. And so this is where I'm saying I'm going to use that tangent formula. I have three options of the tangent formula, and I'm going to use the one that has just sine on the bottom because it's going to make it simpler for me to simplify it easier to simplify it. Okay, so my formula looks like that. 1 minus the cosine of what? Well, it's that one I have in parentheses, so that's going to be 7 pi over 6 over the sine of 7 pi over 6. So now I'm going to go and evaluate. Cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Okay, and I've talked to you all about this. This is a complex fraction. I don't have a radical here. It's just a complex fraction. So I'm going to multiply by the least common denominator. Well, the only denominator I have is 2. And because I don't want um, a negative down on the bottom, I'm actually going to multiply it by negative 2 over negative 2. And when you do that, y'all, negative 2 times 1 half, the reason you do that is because the 2's cancel. So on the bottom, I have a 1, and now I don't even have a fraction. But I'm going to have negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. And then I'm going to have negative 2. Okay, so look here. I got negative 2. A negative and a negative. And three negatives means it's going to be negative. The twos cancel, leaving me with the square root of three. And that's our answer. So that was a lot easier to simplify than some of the ones that I've done in the past. Okay, 
Last problem. I worked this problem out on the notes. Um, it's a little bit longer. So if you look at that, if you have any questions, but I thought I would do this, it's the same concept. Okay. So we have to solve the equation over the interval zero to two pi. And this one says two sine squared of X over two plus the cosine of X equals one plus the sine of X. Well, as I've mentioned to you before, okay, these angles are not the same. They got an X, an X, and an X over two. So I have to make them all the same before I can continue solving. So this, I'm going to use a half angle identity and I'm going to plug into it. So I have two times something squared, because remember that squared next to the sign means it's outside here, okay? And everything else is the same. So the only thing I'm doing is what is the sine of X over two? Well, the sine of X over two or the half angle sine formula says it's plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine X over two. So I plug that in. Well, the beauty of it is y'all, when you square this, that makes the radical go away and that plus or minus is gonna go away because either one of those, when you square it, it's positive. So now keep in mind too, that this two right here is under the radical. So when I square it, I basically have two times one minus cosine X over two. Well, these two twos are gonna cancel. So I'm left with one minus cosine X plus cosine X equals one plus sine X. Well, my two cosines are gone. And if I subtract one, then I'm gonna get zero equals the sine of X. And where does X equal, where's the sine equal to zero? We just talked about that. That is at zero and pi. So that is all we have. Okay. If you have any questions about half angles or double angles identities, please don't hesitate to come see us. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a great day.